Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2019 battle series. I hope you all had a brilliant weekend. We are back here again today kicking off with this Kieran White team that we started with last week and at the beginning of last week we did mention that as we go through these episodes we'll be tweaking and changing the team to overcome bad matchups. Make sure that it has really good cohesiveness as we go through these matches making it a really good competitive build to get that final finished polished article that we want. So thank you so much before we get into anything to each and every one of you for all the suggestions and comments that you put out throughout the last week on this team we'll be integrating some of those ideas as we go through this week and really hopefully trying to integrate them into that final finished product i hope you found this kind of process beneficial and hopefully you can take some of these ideas into your own building processes and testing phases never be scared to try things out though that's the big thing i think just try things out because they might work but they might not work and if they don't work it doesn't matter because we're not in a really important competitive environment this is the place where you test these ideas out and make the changes and get that final build that you're really happy with so we've made some changes coming into today's episode just to recap the team we've got the Curum white there we've still got the icmz on it but we've bulked it out a lot we've slowed it down a little bit it's still going to be hitting very hard but it's going to be able to take a lot more attacks, namely Moonblast from Azernia straight up. So that's quite nice to have that as a fallback on. We give it Fusion Flare as well, got rid of the Icy Wind because we weren't really utilising that form of speed control. And we've got it elsewhere in the team now. So hopefully the Kieran White still performs as well as it was last week and still carries on. But we'll see what the new build is going to be like going into today's episode. Got the Sogaleo. We've again switched up some of those EVs and made it a bit bulkier. We've dropped the knockoff. We've given it Wide Guard and Protect. It just gives us those two options of protecting and manoeuvring our ball positions when we want to. We've dropped the Arcanine sadly and integrated in Cinero. It just gives us a bit more solidarity against some of those bigger threats that we're seeing at the minute, especially for the, the Sogaleo there and Lunala and Gengar and things like that. The Intimidate is very nice as always. The fake out support is extremely useful. And we've got that nice pivot as well with the U-turn. We've put the Citrus Berry on the Sogaleo as well. Got rid of the weakness policy because we haven't got the Bulldoze self proccing now and I think with the EV spread that we've got we give ourselves a better chance of being able to take a combination of attacks and one on one attacks as well and just it allows Sogaleo a little bit more security when it's on the field. We've got the Tapu Fini in there over the Tapu Lele which gives us the Misty Terrain support protection against status attacks and things like that. We've got Icy Wind there, Light Screen there and the Nature's Madness. It gives us a nice switch in as well to something like Kyogre that we have been struggling with so far. Next Pokemon we've got is Nihiligo. Now this is a Pokemon that I've been wanting to test out with the Kieran White for a long time. I think without it in the team you look at it and we really struggle against things like ho or um, Eveltal to a certain extent. Fairies were kind of relying on Sogaleo if that goes down then our game plan's kind of shot so with this Pokemon in the team it kind of covers all of those aspects. We go with the Focus Sash to give it a bit more security again when it's out on the field so we can at least take one hit and then return with a big hit back. We've got Grass Knot, Power Gem and Sludge Bomb all nice options to hit things that are going to be big threats to the team so I'm quite confident about the Nile League going looking forward to testing it and then we've got the Serena then tagged on the end there it gives us another option against Kyogre and keeps that priority protection that the Tapu Lele gave us before. So that is the team recap. As always, it's in the description below if you want to go and test it out in the meantime. Let me know what you think of it. If you missed any of last week's episodes and wondered how we got to this point with the team so far, go back up here. I'll link a card for you lovely people and you can go back and check those out and then come back to this one when you've checked out what we did. It's a bit sad that we've dropped the Abomasnot and the Mandibus, but at the same time, we're keeping them in the back of our mind because they didn't do too bad jobs. We can always integrate them back into the team. But this is the time when we need to start testing a few more variations and going forward to see if these options are going to be more beneficial for the overall build of the team. Right, let's get into today's episode. That was a bit of a long intro, um, but we'll get some music on, hop into it, and uh, hopefully this will be a good one. As always, if you enjoy the content, make sure you do hit the like button. It really helps support the channel, lets me know that you're enjoying this content, and make sure that you do subscribe as well so you don't miss any of these daily episodes, as well as our guides and all our other VGC content, like our Flinch Squad Circuit review show and things like that. Um, music for today. Let's go with Elite Four to kick us off. So should be quite exciting. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find a pond. If it does, we'll just cut right to that point. 
But, like magic, we have our first opponent of the day, 1542 rated Japanese player, playing a team of, let's hop over to team preview. Groudon, Xerneas, Tapu Koko, Incineroar, Talonflame, and Amoongus. So you've got the restricted combination of the Groudon and the Xerneas there. You've got supporting options with the Tapu Koko for the terrain control, very fast defensive Pokemon. you got Incineroar with the Intimidate support, the Fake Out support, Pivot support as well to help with board adjusting. And then the Talonflame going to be the speed control Pokemon on this team with the Tailwind, that Gale Winds ability. And it can hit things for very good damage. You've got to imagine that the Z move on this team is probably on one of three Pokemon, either the Groudon, the Tapu Koko, or the Talonflame. So we need to just keep that in mind when we are playing this game. And then you've got the Amoongus tagged on there is a sort of Trick Room deterrent, I guess, for this team, because otherwise the team does struggle a little bit against Trick Room if it does go up. Kind of indicates that the Groudon's not really a Trick Room variant here, so it might be a bit more fragile than we're used to. I think here, though, I'm going to lead off with Kieran White. And I think I'm going to bring Incineroar. I need Incineroar for the Talonflame, for the Groudon, and the Paws Incineroar. It's very nice for the Amoongus as well. Um, I think we probably want Sogaleo. And I really feel like Nihiligo could be quite good here. There's not really... Um, I mean, the, the Finny's nice for the Amoongus Spores and things like that. But outside of that, I think we should be okay. So We'll bring Nihiligo to this first one today, and uh, hopefully it's a good one. So, it's nice to be able to kick off with Nihiligo. I really do like it, and I think it's got a lot of potential in its format. It's just kind of fitting it into that right build and getting it supported well enough. So, as I say, this is a testing process, and we'll go through it this week, and hopefully it's all working perfectly. So, I'm going to see Groudon and Tapu Koko come out for my opponent. And we'll lead off with the Curum and Incineroar. So this isn't too bad for us here. We've got the option to pull the trigger on that Z move straight away onto the ground on if we'd like to. Uh, we get the Intimidate onto it as well. And we can just fake out that Tapu Koko. I mean, we could double tap the Tapu Koko if we feel like the Groudon's maybe going to protect here. Which it possibly could. Um, and just fake out Earth Power the Tapu Koko. It does leave the Groudon in a position where it can just start throwing out attacks. But... The Intimidate, I'm not too worried about what it can do. Um, and an Earth Power and a Faker should be enough to get the Coco. Um, I feel like that's what I kind of want to do. Although I don't really want to leave the Groudon alone. But it has to feel very threatened by this Curum White. So we'll go for that. We'll go for that. We'll go for the Double Tap. Get rid of the Coco. Groudon switching out. Okay, that's good. Incineroar coming in. Unless the Tapu Coco just protects you. Which could make sense. Because there is fake out pressure here, my opponent might want to not lose it straight away. No protect though, so we are going to get the fake out into that slot, and like I say, an earth power should be enough to get the core core, depending on its build, obviously. But yeah, there we go. So, first turn, all things going well, and uh, the core core dropping. So, I would imagine the Groudon probably come back in now. Maybe the Xerneas, maybe the Xerneas, maybe the Xerneas. Does make a lot of sense if the Xerneas does come back in. And it is the Xerneas. It is that Xerneas. Um, okay. I think it's a good time to get Sogaleo out onto the field. Um, and I think I'm going to just eat. I could eat. I could snarl as well. Good snarl. But I think u turning's not a bad option because if we can get that Intimidate and the, the Fake Out support back onto the field, it gives us a little bit more room. Especially if we've got Sogaleo out, because the sun is up, we've got to keep that in mind. The Incineroar will be hitting us for pretty good damage, unintimidated. So, need to just bear that in mind. No fake out from the Incineroar. We are going to see a Geomancy, though. Oh, hopefully we don't see a Flare Blitz into that Sogaleo slot. That would make things very difficult for us going forward. My opponents picked that off, though. That's a very nice play from them, just kind of covering their options. There's the Geomancy though. The Xerneas getting crazy and there's a the Flare Blitz. It's going to be into that slot. Oh, it's into the Incineroar. Maybe expecting the switch there. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Um, that really kind of gives us a little bit of leverage because otherwise that could have been super nasty. Um, I think we'll bring in Nihiligo now because Nihiligo doesn't mind too much the Xerneas, although we're not going to be hitting it for super effective damage, but I feel like the Incineroar is probably in power gem range now. Um, 
So I'm just gonna go for the Sunsteel Strike into Xerneas, and I'm gonna go for the Power Gem into Incineroar. And one of the only shinies that I've got from my, um, that I've caught on my cart is this Nihiligo that I got from the 2018 season. So I thought I'd bring it back into the fold for this team today. And uh, all I need to do is put Grass Knot on it. Because it wasn't relevant in that format, but it is, it's super relevant now. It does nice damage. It does it really, if you can put like Groudon into about 60% range, you can pretty much guarantee that you're always going to be getting it. So instead of we're going to switch out now, we're going to see that Groudon come in. We could have maybe predicted that as well, but at the same time, we don't want to leave that Incineroar unchecked. Let's see a Dazzling Gleam from the Xerneas. Um, both my Pokemon able to take it quite comfortably. Power Gem coming out now into this Groudon. And uh, doing no damage at all. <laughs> no damage. But I think we've got the option, depending on the build of this Groudon, we've got the option to double tap that slot this next turn. Sunseal Strike, I don't know if it's going to be enough to pick up the knockout. Oh, it misses just just barely and we've got the sludge bomb option there um now what i could do is protect Sogaleo and just go for this grass knot into the ground on i fully expect the Xerneas to protect here and the Groudon try to clear the field. So if we can get a grass knot off depending on the ground on build we might be able to get a, a knockout but it, i'd imagine it probably is able to take um the grass knot but we'll see we'll see we'll see So there's the Protect from the Xerneas. We'll get this Grass Knot into Groudon. We'll probably lose Nihiligo, but it does give us a means to get Incineroar back in, Cycle that Intimidate, and uh, also have that Fake Out pressure going into the next turn. Yeah, not quite enough to get the Groudon as a Precipice Blaze comes out. I mean, if it misses, that's even better, but it's not going to miss. And uh, Nihiligo doing some nice work here, so it is going to go down. But like I say, it would not too worried at this point because it gives us that opening to bring the Incineroar back in. The Xerneas is just protected so cannot protect this next turn. One of the things we could, well, I don't really want to risk it too much because I was going to say we could um, just double tap the Groudon but at the same time we might be slower than the Groudon. Hopefully if it does attack here, we can get a good judge on speed tiers, depending on when it flinches, going into these final few turns. But as soon as we knock out the Xerneas, I think we can close this one up. Xerneas going for the double protect, it does fail. We'll get the fake out into this Groudon. We'll be able to tell now if it's faster than... Okay, so Sogaleo is faster than it, so we've got that security going into this next turn. And we'll be able to clean up the Xerneas now with this Sunsteel Strike. And there we go. So Sogaleo doing some work here. And the sun does fade, which helps us out massively. But we can just tap into the ground on this next turn. Uh, and you turn out on the Poison Incineroar. Well, we probably don't want to do that, to be honest. We probably want to, uh, just because of the fake out, we don't want to. Because Sogaleo is going to get faked out, I would imagine, here. So we can switch Incineroar out to cure him, protect Sogaleo. I think that's probably the best option. We don't need to worry about the Groudon having anything like Substitute or anything. It's not in range to be able to utilize that, so that's a, that's another good point. But bringing Incineroar back into the team, and I know people have gripes about using Incineroar all the time, but really, it, it's not a top tier Pokemon for no reason. It does so much and um, it's just utility of supporting everything else is just incredible. Um, and you can see it in this first match where we've brought it back in and we're really utilizing it um, to its best of its ability, um, what it's bringing to the team and just making it, a, it's like gluing it together and making it a, a lot more cohesive. We're gonna see the Groundium Z coming out from the Groudon, but it will probably be into this Sogaleo, I would imagine. Um, I mean, if it's into the Curum, we'll take it, but yeah, it's into the Curum. Minus one, though, we should take this. Is it minus one? Or is it just straight up? Either way, it's minus one, yeah. I mean, we take that even if it's not minus one. Um, so we're in a decent position now. We can just superpower the Incineral. And should we showboat? Should we showboat? And go for the Z move into the Groudon, just in case it protects as well. I mean, we've got that option. Superpower the Incineral. 
um, but my opponent forfeits. So that's our first game out the way and a nice win for us to kick off today's episode. So all things going well, things are uh, working out all right so far. So, But you cannot take one match as just, yes, the team's working. We need to give it a good test out. So, um, But I do like the new inclusions in the team. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. And um, let me know what you think of this arena and the Nile Ego and the other changes that we've made to the team. Like I say, if you're wondering what the exact build is, it's down below in the description. So you can check that out and um, have a look through that. Just to have a look over the EV spreads and things like that that we've got there. And if you want any explanations, just hit me up and uh, I'm more than happy to uh, go through those with you. And across my version two, as we've got our next opponent playing a team of... Incineroar, Sogalea, Araquanid, Amoongus, Tapacoco, and Xerneas. Big pause there after the Araquanid. Um, but okay, so we've got the Sogalea, Xerneas combination restricted pair. Got a supporting cast of Incineroar, like usual, with that fake out support, intimidate support. Amoongus gonna be here for the spore redirection and all sorts of shenanigans along that. We've got the Tapacoco, it's gonna be another fast defensive sweeper with its electric terrain uh, that we need to keep in mind and uh, do that but I think you know looking at this team I think this is one where Tapu Fini really does excel um, it can set up a light screen which is very helpful it's got the misty terrain that helps against the Amoongus it's a nice switch in for a Raquanid nice switch in for Incineroar in general um, so it doesn't do too bad a job here um, I do want to bring that I think um, it's just what we're gonna lead I expect the Incineroar to come up for my opponent um, Nilego again isn't a bad option here at all. Um, I think I do want to bring Nilego. Um, it's just going to struggle a little bit against the opposing Sogaleo. Um, let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Kiram, um, Sogaleo, and uh, Incineroar or Tapu Fini. I said Tapu Fini. But we're not bringing it. Uh, I don't know. I've probably chosen a little bit wrong, but running out of time. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, the Tapu Fini is nice as a switch in for like a lot of stuff, and especially the Xerneas as well. If it is getting set up and we can get rid of the electric terrain and then, you know, get the light screen up, here's away those boosts and stuff like that. But we do have a lot to kind of tackle Sogaleo anyway. Um, we haven't brought the Serena yet so far, but we haven't really faced Kyogre, which is primarily here for. I'm gonna see Xerneas and Incineroar come up for my opponent. Hmm. We do see that the um, the Xerneas is faster than our Curum. I'd imagine my opponent probably fakes out the Nihiligo this turn. Um. I don't really want to lose our Sash either, so I'm just going to protect Nihiligo and... Do I bring in Sogaleo right now? Sogaleo could be quite nice for us. Because I probably don't want to bring in Incineroar just yet. Um, but Incineroar gives us the fake out support, which gives us a little bit more room going into the next turn. We can't really do anything to prevent the Xerneas getting the turn 1 Geomancy up. And like I say, I expect fake out into the Nihiligo and the Geomancy from my opponent. But we don't want to lose our Sash just yet on Nihiligo. So there's a fake out into that Nihiligo slot. And we are going to see a Geomancy there from the Xerneas. The thing is there, if my Curum was faster than the, um, the Xerneas in this situation, we could just go for uh, the ICMZ into that slot, get some big damage on it. And even after a Geomancy, that would probably put it in range for a Sludge Bomb to pick up the knockout onto it, which is quite useful. Um, I think here, we're just gonna burn a turn. I'm just gonna Sludge Bomb and I'm gonna go, hmm, yeah, fake out. Because I expect the Xerneas to protect here. And then the next turn we can Snarl, yeah. Like I could have double tapped into this Incineroar, but at the moment I'm not really too worried about this Incineroar being out on the field. Um, that's the thing. So I don't want to give my opponent an, an easy switch in to start supporting that Xerneas even more. Right, so we'll go for the Sludge Bomb once again, and I think we'll go for a Snarl this time around. My opponent probably doubles in to the Nihiligo now with the 
Incineroar and Xerneas, I'd imagine. Like Moonblast into that slot with a knockoff or Dazzling Gleam and a knockoff. It feels like that would be the most optimal kind of play for them right now. So there's the Dazzling Gleam. If we can get the poison here, that would be huge for us. I mean, that still does a lot of damage. <clears throat> and we'll get the Snarl off as well, which lowers the attack power of that Xerneas, making it it's a little less threatening. Probably see a U-turn from this Incineroar. Just a knockoff, like we said, to begin with. Um, and that will put us in range now of a Dazzling Gleam, unfortunately. Um, hmm. I'm just going to protect Nihiligo. We'll see a Dazzling Gleam come out here, for sure. Um... And I'm just going to U-turn out onto the Incineroar. But we need to get Sogaleo in, like, pretty badly. Mm. I feel like this match is slipping away from us quite quickly here. Oh, we do survive. That's huge for us. That is actually huge for us. I was kind of hoping after that Snarl that we take another Dazzling Gleam if they tap into that slot. So that is massive for us because now... Mm, the only problem is, I expect a knockoff to come into our Incineroar slot, which is not ideal for Sogaleo at all. Um, but I'm going to have to bring it in because we need to start really pressuring this Xerneas. <sighs> Losing our Citrus Berry right now and taking a boatload of damage is not going to be good though. Yeah. <sighs> Now we either superpower the Incineroar. I think we bring in Incineroar now and we superpower. So the Xerneas could protect. I feel like the Xerneas probably does protect. Well, it can't not though, it kind of needs to because we could just superpower the Incineroar. Um, I could just protect Zergaleo though, Zergaleo. I can literally just protect Sogaleo. I think that's probably the best option here. We just protect, bring Incineroar in, hopefully get Incineroar in, and then we've got... If that Xerneas does protect, then we've locked that next turn where we can just tap that and fake out the imposing Incineroar. But it all depends on what my opponent does here. Got to hope that that protect from the Xerneas comes out. Uh, it's not going to. Probably just going to see Dazzling Gleam again. Yeah. But Incineroar should take this now. It's just this next turn makes it a little bit more awkward because... Oh, Darkest Lariat. Not something you see too often. Um, now the, the Xerneas protects. As we fake out the opposing Incineroar, oh, yeah. Hmm. Now what do we sack? Because we could sack Nihiligo rather than Incineroar. It's probably not a bad option. And then go for the Sunsteel Strike into the Xerneas. Because we're going to see a Dazzling Gleam. And then the double up from the opposing Incineroar into our Sogaleo. It's taken too much resource. This is why this lead is so good. The Xerneas Incineroar. If you lead wrong against it, it makes it so difficult to do anything against. Okay, so Sogaleo actually getting away with no damage, no Dazzling Gleam damage this turn, but it's whether or not we can take a Flare Blitz from this range. And even minus one, I don't know if we can. Get the Sunsteel Strike for sure into the Xerneas here and remove this from the field. So that's one issue gone. And the Darkest Lariat. What's a Flare Blitz? Okay. We take it. I was just hanging on there because I'm like, is it going to burn? Is it going to burn? I feel like it's going to burn. Um, Alright, let's bring Incineroar back in now. So the match isn't gone, gone. But it's still going to be difficult. We're going to have this Sogaleo back for my opponent to deal with. So, Ooh, it's Araquanid. Araquanid. Alright. Hmm. That Intimidate's so, so useful against that Pokemon. 
Um, now we just superpower. The opposing Incineroar. Like it either switches out to Sogaleo or it stays in and goes down. So there's the Fear Cult. Superpower. We still have Curum. We still have Curum. Right, so it's not it's not lost, but it's not gonna be easy at all. Zogaleo has gotta be the last one here. Hmm. Yes, Sogaleo. Is it worth preserving Sogaleo? It's like switching it out, resetting the attack drop. And getting a flare blitz onto the Sogaleo. If we can get a Flare Blitz onto that Sogaleo, that's pretty huge for us, I think. Because it means it's probably in range for an Earth Power from my Q and White. But I imagine you'd probably just attack into Incineroar here if you're Sogaleo, because you don't want to take. So Sunseal Strike coming out, it's going to be into that Incineroar for sure. Makes a lot of sense. And then the Iraq when it's left. Free to do whatever it wants to here. Leech life. Okay. Healing back some damage. Yeah. Sogaleo is so low health now. I just don't feel like we've got enough to deal with what's out on the field. Where do we go? Where do we go? Um, I mean, the Sunsteel Strike. And Fusion Flare. Fusion Flare is probably more powerful. Uh, onto the Sogaleo. Let's try that. Double tap the Sogaleo. This might go wrong if they protect it. So there we go. Fusion Flare. We're going to be able to, to get this into this Sogaleo. It's not going to be enough to pick up the knockout. And not put it in range for it. A Sunsteel Strike either. If we had the knockoff, you see there, that would be enough. But I think the moral of the story is here. Oh, we're going to see a Z move. Bing, bing. So, probably going to have to put an overlay. I'll cut this little bit out. Because it is the signature Z move, which is annoyingly copyright blocked. Such a long Z move as well. <laughs> Serious sun rays smash. Yeah, this is gonna be more than enough to take out this um, this crew. The thing is, what we like this isn't a team problem, this is how we led here. We led ourselves into a situation where we can prepare enough for that service incinerally. And by the time it took us to take those two Pokemon down, we lost so much traction and we had very little resource to kind of just close out the game so um, props to my opponent for identifying that as a very good lead for them but you know it kind of, it has cost us a lot here by not really considering it enough in this game so good game to my opponent some good lessons going into future matches and just not really getting complacent when that combination of Pokemon is in a team so um, that is a big issue but I'm gonna wrap things up there guys kicked off nicely today it'll be great to hear your suggestions on what the changes what you think of them are like and what you would do going forward but we'll give this team another run out in tomorrow's episode before we make any drastic changes going into any more episodes and we'll probably love to do the first changes on wednesday so get your suggestions in let me know your comments on today's episode hope you've enjoyed it guys and uh, i have a poll up at the moment on youtube so go over there check that out and you can vote for what team you'd like to see next week on the channel so Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day, afternoon, morning, evening, night, whatever time of day it is for yourselves. And uh, I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, guys, take care and bye-bye.